Hello and welcome to this new video tutorial about Model Converter X. In this video tutorial I want to demonstrate some newly added functionality uh, and that is the functionality to add and edit animations in the hierarchy editor. So let's get started. I'll just load one of my test objects that has animations in there. I'll just play it a little bit, you'll see that it has rotating and translating boxes that are animating. Uh, and let's fire up the hierarchy editor. As you probably already know, you can see in the hierarchy editor if a certain node has transformations and animations in them. So I've selected this red box up here now, and you can see that it has a transformation and an animation. And until this new development release version that I just released yesterday evening, that was all you could do in the hierarchy editor. Uh, but I've made some changes now that gives you more functionalities. For example, if you right click on the transformation uh, label, you can either delete the transformation to remove it from the object or edit it. If you click edit, you get this additional dialog where you can either edit the matrix itself directly, but unless you studied some computer graphics, I guess the values in the matrix don't say you that much. So you can also modify the decomposition that's shown at the bottom, where you see the translation, rotation and scaling along the x, y and z axis. So that's, for most people, I guess the easiest way to, to tweak things. Uh, so let's for example say I want to rotate this object 30 degrees along the z axis. Well, I changed the value here, you might have seen that up here also the rotation bit of the matrix was actually changed. So I've pressed OK now, the object is rotated 30 degrees since I modified the transformation and it's still animating like before. I can do something similar for the animation, so I can also right click on that label. And I get a delete option again to remove the animation from the object. I can reverse the animation, so this will play the animation backwards, the last frame becomes the first and the first frame becomes the last, and I can edit it. And that's the most powerful thing of course. This brings up an animation key editor, where you can see the different keys that are present, well they were listed here already as well of course, um, and you can see the values that they have, and you can modify them. So you can change the time, you can change the values, so I can for example say I want this object not only to animate in the Z direction, as you saw it was moving up, but I also give it an animation in the Y direction. So now that I've done that, you see that the key here is updated, and if I now play the animation again, you see the box is also moving sideways. So with this new editing functionality, you can, I think, tweak your object much better. Uh, you can modify the transformations and the animations that are there, and I think that will be helpful during certain conversions. But there's one more functionality that I want to show you, and for that I'll just load another object. This is a very simple radar dish that I grabbed from uh, from a Google uh, SketchUp warehouse. It's no longer Google, um, and I'm just using it for this for this demonstration. Let me center the object in the middle, and this is a radar dish, and I wanted to rotate, because that's what radars do. Um, so I just select the root node that contains all the bits of the object, and you can see that it has no transformations at all now. No, no transformation, no animation, nothing. But if I right click on uh, this number of transformations label, I can add a transformation and add an animation. So I'll add one of both. And then I can edit them again, like I just showed before. So I can edit the transformation, and as you see the object is still a little bit low compared to the axis, so I move it up a bit, making it a little bit better positioned. And for the animation, I can, well you see there's an empty animation here that I added, it just says unknown, which is the animation type. I can make it an ambient animation, and now I need to add some keys. So we'll bring up the animation key editor again, and this time it has no keys there yet. So I can press the add button to add a new key. When there's one keeper in the list, uh, present in the list, 
you can change the type so you can make, uh, make it a vector animation uh, for translation or quaternion animation for rotation we want it to rotate it in this case so I make it quaternion and then here I can modify the values of the quaternion or since this is just as cryptical as the matrix you can also do the decomposition below which shows the rotation along the x, y and z axis so for the first keyframe it's fine to have no rotations, nothing I add a second one, 100 for the time, it's okay with me and let's say I wanted to rotate 120 degrees along the z axis so I typed it in here you see the quaternion is updated as well I press OK. The animation is added to the objects, and if I now animate it, you see it's rotating. So with this functionality, you can add uh, simple animations to to your scenery objects. For example, if your modeling tool doesn't support it, there's one small catch: uh, Model Converter X groups all triangles that have the same material together, just like the MDL format does in Flight Simulator. So this means uh, that if you want to animate a specific bit of the object you need to make sure it has a unique material else the triangles will be mixed up with other parts of your object and that need to remain static and then it's not possible to add the animation but if you prepare the object in your modeling tool so that the materials are unique uh, it should be quite easy to add simple animations with this feature so I hope you like those additions to the development release. Uh, if you have any issues using them or any questions or whatever, feel free to post them in the Model Converter X forum on Avis Developer. And I hope you enjoy this new feature and thanks for watching.